Hi, uh, Tom Rogers again with uh, Schmooze News and Reviews. Amazing what happens when you have a afternoon off. Anyway, going back to May of 2018, I used to have a blog for the Times of Israel. I was getting so frequently censored, and I was frustrated, and I wasn't getting paid anyway. So I basically threw in the towel in 2020 and have just been making a living since then. I have met a lady and hopefully we will be moving, I'll be moving on to other things in my life. But anyway, the recent demonstrations of Haredim have had in different parts of the country against serving in the military this is especially disgusting, while the country is literally on fire. And you go back, and if you want to look on my blog, it was under Akiva Ben Avram. That was my, or is my Hebrew name. And I called it the Haredi Defenders of Jerusalem. Because at that time, like eternally they find themselves always having something else to do other than defending the country you know maybe they would like to go down to Gaza maybe they would like to go to Iran maybe then you know especially like crazies from the Notori Carta would uh, would be satisfied I I don't know anyway uh, so many of them just seem to want to check and don't want to do anything for the country itself. And so I remember this, you know, I had a picture of Haredim, Bell's Haredim, straight off the boat. I don't know, probably from a dis displaced person camp in Cyprus. And they had been given Sten machine guns to fight with. Now, the Sten was a cheap weapon for the British. They'd lost so much uh, weaponry as they were evacuating uh, France at Dunkirk that they had to very quickly make up for that. And the Thompson machine guns were very, very expensive. And so they came up with their own 9 millimeters. And the Sten was one of the very, very inexpensive, easily made, it was made in underground factories. Uh, the 9mm ammunition was made, especially in a, nine, in a kibbutz, it was literally underground, under a laundry, if you can believe this, you know, where they were packing 9mm parabellum. The, the weapon itself was... Uh, prone to misfire. It was known as the plumber's nightmare because it had everything from bed springs to God only knows what in it. But anyway, here you have these Haredim. They don't even speak Hebrew. The language of command is Yiddish. And what were they defending? They were defending the part of Jerusalem which is now the it's the museum on the scene and across from that was the former Mandelbaum Gate. Uh, before the 1967 war, that was the checkpoint between Jordanian-occupied East Jerusalem and the western part of Jerusalem. But what kept the Jordanian Legion from taking the entire city? Because they had taken the eastern part of the city. Uh, the other Arab armies were incompetent, they were untrained. However, Glub Pasha, a British officer, very well led the Jordanian Legion. You know, it had the, at that time, modern M4 Sherman tanks. Uh, they were pushing everything aside. The, the British, or the Israelis basically had no armor. And so what Shlomo Gorin did, and I have the book, and I've read what Shlomo Gorin did, 
was on that Friday night, he went from one synagogue to another, even to the Notori Karta. And he said, we have to dig. We have to dig tank ditches. And even the Notori Karta didn't listen to the Rosh Hashivas. They said, Arabs are going to win anyway. Well, guess what? A thousand yeshiva bocherers, bocherim, went out and dug. They dug the trenches. And then the next day, and of course the Jordanian Legion is going to attack on Shabbat, they were defeated because one tank after another fell in the ditch. And that was the end of the Jordanian penetration into the city of Jordan, or Jerusalem. Real history, the Haredim can fight when they need to. I, I've also pulled down a picture off the internet of a Haredi, I've posted it somewhere, of a Haredi with his baby, and he was outside of uh, Modin Elite, or Beitar Elite, I forget which one. Because those are settlements on the other side of the Green Line. So, again, this is the history. And you have people that won't pick up anything. You know, they don't even think that they need to pay often on the train line. You know, they get a government check. They want the money out of my pocket. They want me to pay for their children's weddings with my pocket change. I work two jobs. I have no money for them. So maybe it's time that they need to start paying their freight and pulling their weight in the country that they enjoy the infrastructure of. Because trust me, if these Arabs win they will be dead. It will be October 7th all over again, but for the entire land of Israel. Anyway, thank you for your time.